A plenary indulgence may be gained on each of the five Sundays preceding the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe by devoutly visiting her image exposed in the church. Today is the third of these five Sundays. And finally, with Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday, the best way to give thanks to God for his many blessings is to attend the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We encourage all those who are able to do so to attend Mass on Thursday. On Friday of this week, there is no obligation to abstain from meat due to a long-standing custom in the United States for the Friday after Thanksgiving Day. The epistle for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost is from St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, we have been praying for you unceasingly, asking that you may be filled with knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. May you walk worthily of God and please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. May you be completely strengthened through his glorious power unto perfect patience and long-suffering, joyfully rendering thanks to God the Father, who has made us worthy to share the lot of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, the remission of sins. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, at that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let him who reads understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything from his house, and let him who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. But woe to those who are with child, or have infants at the breast in those days. But pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, nor will be. And unless those days had been shortened, no living creature would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened." Then if anyone say to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told it to you beforehand. If therefore they say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, do not go forth. Behold, he is in the inner chambers, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines even to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the body is there, it is, there the eagles will also be gathered together. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give her light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then will all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming upon the clouds of heaven with great power and majesty. And he will send forth his angels with a trumpet and with a great sound, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now from the fig tree learn this parable. When its branch is now tender and the leaves break forth, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all these things have been accomplished. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Thus far the words of today's epistle and Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary Immaculate Queen, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. My dearly beloved in Christ, this gospel 
as I'm sure you know, is a prophecy of our Lord concerning two events, one of them the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place some 40 years after these words were spoken, and the other is the end of time, the last day, the general judgment. And there are many places in scripture where that event is spoken of, how the heavens and the earth will be shaken, the stars will fall from heaven, the sun will not give her light, and the earth will be consumed with fire, and that will be the end of time, the end of the world. And all men who have ever lived will be gathered together in one place. There will be a tremendous sound of the trumpet, and the bodies of all who have ever lived will rise from the dead, be reunited to their souls, and everyone will be gathered together in one place for the general judgment. Now, we might think to ourselves, well, very likely I won't be alive when that happens. One thing is for sure, we don't know when that will be, the end of the world. Our Lord himself said, not even the angels in heaven know when the end of the world will take place. And so it could be that none of us in this church are living on the last day, at the end of time. Of course, it could also happen that every single one of us will be alive when that will take place, because we do not know when it will be. But one thing we do know is, according to the fathers of the church, there must be three events that will take place before the end of the world. One of them is the spread of the faith throughout the world. And we could say that that has been done. The other two conditions, however, have not been fulfilled. One of them is the conversion of the Jewish people en masse, not just individual converts, but as a nation. The Jews will finally recognize Christ as the true Messiah. So the conversion of the Jewish people. And then the third condition is the coming of the Antichrist. So we have not seen either of those final two requirements prophesied before the end of the world comes. And so that leads me to think that it's not, you might say, right around the corner. At the same time, we might ask ourselves, well, why does Holy Mother Church give us this gospel every year on the last Sunday after Pentecost, where we read about the end of time, if very likely we will not be among those who are living on the last few days of time. Well, there are several reasons for that. First of all, for those who are living, they will have this reminder of our Lord's prophecy. But also, it seems that this is a very important event in God's plan. You might say the whole work of creation, from the creation of the angels, of the world, of Adam and Eve, the fall of the angels, the fall of man, the history of the world for thousands of years, the coming of the Redeemer who had been prophesied into the world, and then finally the conclusion, the end of time, that all of this follows inevitably God's plan. He permits evil, but he will triumph. And so this final judgment, this second coming of our Lord in glory and majesty to judge all mankind is something very important in God's plan because everything must take place as God wills and it will be the final, you might say, justification of God's judgments of his plans of his holy will. Everyone, everyone will be compelled to acknowledge God's perfect justice, his goodness, his mercy, and to recognize that his will was done. So the end of the world, an incredible time to imagine those who witness these things taking place. 
Now, it has happened a number of times over the course of the centuries since the time of our Lord that people really believed the end of the world was at hand because things in society were so bad. In fact, it seems in St. Paul's, I think his second epistle to Thessalonians, that he himself believed that the time was very short, that it was going to come any time. Another occasion when people believed the end of the world was close at hand was at the time of the Western Schism, which took place from 1738 to 1417 or 1418, a period of about 40 years, where there were two men who claimed to be Pope and then later on a third one. And it was a time of such confusion and division. And there was a saint that was raised up at that time by God, an extraordinary saint named St. Vincent Ferrer. And St. Vincent Ferrer was from Spain, but he traveled throughout Europe preaching. And he was an extraordinary miracle worker and preacher. They would build a stage in the town square so people could see him. And there would be, at times, 10,000 people who would gather. And the person who was the farthest away could hear even though they didn't have amplification in those days, could hear as though he were standing right in front of him. Furthermore, the gift of tongues, they could also understand his words. And people would follow him from one city to the next just to hear his next sermon. And he performed numerous miracles. But St. Vincent Ferrer, because of the problems in society and in the church at that time, truly believed that the end of the world was at hand. In fact, he called himself the angel of judgment. He said, I'm the angel that was predicted by St. John the evangelist in the apocalypse, who's going to announce the general judgment and the end of the world. And he believed that. In fact, one story is that he was speaking about this and there were some learned men, some doctors of theology there. And they thought, well, this is this might even be blasphemy. This is terrible. And then he said, go to such and such a gate of the city and there you will find a dead woman and bring her here. And they did. And he raised the woman to life. And then he asked her, am I the angel of the judgment? And she said, truly, you are the angel of the judgment. So quite an extraordinary event. But the world has continued since then. And it might last even many more years. But one thing we know for sure is that our own end of the world will come when we draw our last breath and God calls us from this world, from all the trials of life. And he calls us to render an account of how we have lived, how we have cooperated with his graces, how we have obeyed his commandments, how we have fulfilled the duties of our state in life, how we have lived. And that could come, and very possibly may come, much sooner than we think. So let us live each day as if it were to be our last. Let us prepare for judgment, and let us look forward to being with God forever, for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.